Hello and welcome to this ADF Insider presentation on logging in Oracle ADF applications. My name is Duncan Mills and I'm an architect in the Oracle Development Tools division. So what we can be looking at today is how developers can add informational messages to their applications to help them work out what's going on. To help us uh, illustrate this topic, I'm going to be using the Summit ADF application, which you can download from the Oracle Technology Network and have a look at yourself. So what I want to do, first of all, is just think about how a developer might gain information about what's going on inside the application when a particular piece of functionality executes. For example, we have the quantity field here. If I put a new value in, then the item total recalculates. And what I want to do is to be able to instrument that calculation so that from a development point of view I can see what's going on in real time. So let's go across to JDeveloper and look how I might do that. So here I am inside JDeveloper and let's get to the method that's actually called when I make that change in the web UI, which is set quantity. At this stage, unfortunately, most developers would tend to do something like this call system out print lin and then just construct a string statement. So what's wrong with using uh, print lin? Well, we all do from time to time, but of course you have to remember to go and remove it from your code when you've finished debugging the thing you're actually looking at. And if you do leave it in there, then, you know, there's really no granularity. The information always goes to the console, there's no way of filtering it, there's no way of suppressing it, and it was never really intended for this use. After all, printing is a way of communicating with the end user, and that's just not relevant in this case. So is there a better way? Well, of course the answer is yes. Let's use a proper logger. If logging is what we're interested in, then let's use a logger that we can switch on and off at runtime and see the output when and where we want to see it. And of course, there are a lot of loggers to choose from within the Java world, but ADF has its own logger, the ADF logger, which wraps up the standard Java logging APIs and provides you with a very nice interface in the form of both JDeveloper tooling and Enterprise Manager tooling for both managing the switching on and switching off of logging, as well as um, viewing the output. So we'll add some logging back into that class in a second, but here's a quick overview. Um, first of all, you have a set of convenience methods within the logger which will allow you to actually print out messages at various levels, so info, config, warning, and so on. If you want to, you can be pulling messages out of a resource bundle, though generally when we're dealing with logging messages, they're not the kind of things that would actually be translated. They're not designed, as I said, for end users to see. It's more of an administrative or a debugging tool. And you can also do things like add guard conditions. So if you've got an expensive uh, operation, such as building up a very long string uh, with logging information in it, you don't have to take that hit every time. You can just use a sim simple if statement around the uh, logger statement. And if you're running with logging on at a particular level, then you do the work and only then. And of course, you need to define a logger. So we'll do this first of all. And as I said, the ADF logging classes are just there already for you as part of the core ADF infrastructure. So you're not going to have to add any JAR files or configure the class path to use this within um, your ADF application. Now, to make things a little bit easier, um, I've also predefined some code templates for you, which you can download from the link you'll find at the end of this presentation. So let's go back to our um, JDeveloper install and change that system print lane for some ordinary logging. So let's uh, remove the print lane statement we had before. Before we can actually make a reference to the logger, of course, we need to create the actual logging object itself. So I have a short template to help me with this lgdef. And that just creates uh, a static ADF logger with the name of underscore logger. And that calls a factory class passing in, in this case, the name of the class we're creating the logger for. Creating an individual logger per class like this does allow us to have extremely 
granular logging and gives us a lot of control over filtering and so on. So now we've got the logger reference created, we can start to use that throughout the code inside this particular piece of Java. So let's navigate back to our set quantity and I'll just use another template here, LGI, which just calls logger at this level with the info level. So the message we're putting in is uh, going to be at the info level. As I mentioned earlier, there are various other levels you can log at, severe, warning and so on. Now, when we write a log message like this, the framework is going to automatically include the name of the method that's being called in the class. So I don't need to include that in the message. Instead, I could just write something simple. So value is, and then as before, just two string on that. So that's the logging message now embedded inside my code. If I run this application at this point in time, I won't actually see anything because logging isn't switched on. So how do I switch logging on? Well, that's pretty simple. Down here in the uh, integrated web logic server log, we can go to the pull down menu and go to configure Oracle diagnostic logging. And we can tell that um, exactly what packages we want to log for. So let's make a note of the actual package this class is in, which is Oracle Summit Model Entities. Then we'll go down here and configure the logging. So you can see here it's giving me a list of all of the um, packages that are currently loaded into the WebLogic instance. And we can either explore this and switch on logging at any particular level, or we can just add the logger here. There's two styles of logger we can attach, either a persistent logger or transient. If we add a persistent logger, it gets stored in the log.xml file. And every time um, I run, uh, the logger configuration will be there and present. If I add a transient logger, it will only live, live as long as this web logic session and then will be undefined afterwards. So let's add this one as transient. And the logger name is basically everything under Oracle Summit Model Entities. And we'll log at the info level, which was the level we created that message at. The logging level here is going to encompass everything above it in the list. So if we're logging at the info level, we will, of course, still see warding and severe messages, but we won't see config levels. If I were to make the log logging work at a finer level, such as finer or finest, then we're going to see pretty much everything. So that's logging switched on. And I can do this at any point in time throughout the uh, life cycle of the application. And as the application is running, switch, switch the logging levels dynamically without having to restart. Now, in this case, of course, we've added some code into the item EO impl. So let's just rerun the application to deploy that new piece of code. So here's the application. We'll just um, look again at that order and keep an eye on the console down here and change the quantity. Now, as we do so, we can see the log message um, coming out here in the console. As the, value is new, the new value is submitted up. The other thing we can do is actually look at this in a form other than the console. The console is rather a flat representation. So we can go here to the analyze log option. And this can analyze any log. In this case, we're going to analyze the current log that has been displayed in the console. My log message. And you can see here I can start to filter the messages by level and so on. So we can switch off these finer levels that we don't care about. Look for everything in the last three minutes and filter um, if needs be. So here we can see the two messages. If we um, select one of these, We can get some more information about it, for example, what class it came from uh, and any additional information that's been passed through. 
We can also have a look to look at uh, everything else that happened um, around the same time as that log message or happened as part of the same request. And that can be extremely useful if you're following a chain of events um, through, the, through the system. The final thing I wanted to show you as part of this logging is um, some of the advanced diagnostics that are actually built into the framework that you can access using the logging mechanism. So we go back to the logging.xml file. Uh, we can start to configure some logging on some of the ADF classes themselves. So on Oracle ADF, we'll just set that one to finest, uh, Oracle ADF internal, and then finally the Oracle JBO classes. Now when we do this, we'll start to see a lot more information appear in the console as part of um, a running application. So I've relaunched the application here and you can see a lot more information is now scrolling past um, from the framework itself. And this, of course, is where having um, the filtered view, the log analyzer available in JDeveloper is very useful. So let's just quickly go through and make one of those changes we made before. see in fact we get an error in that case because I've got the uh, same application in op opening another screen. Let's just go and have a look at the log again. So we can research. This time you'll see we get a lot more information coming out from the framework talking about the um, regions that are being processed and so on. And if we were for example to search again for our particular message that we create ourselves from the summit class. Here we are, value is 21. Now we can actually relate by ADF request. So we can go back and look at the ADF request that actually included that piece of logging that we had. And the nice thing about this view is that we can start to see how long various operations took within the framework and get a comparison of, of where we're really spending all of our time. So you can see in this particular ADF request, nearly all of the time has been spent in the render response phase. This is when the screen is actually being drawn. Um, and a bunch of that time is ha caused by the customer task flow uh, within this region. So this provides you with a nice visualization of uh, where the majority of your time is being spent within uh, a particular transaction. But again, of course, it's all about being able to relate together the various operations that are going towards building up a screen. And from here, we can do things like uh, look at the actual um, ADFBC statements that have been issued and so on. So to finish up then, I just wanted to point out that this same information is all available from Enterprise Manager as well as from the JDeveloper tool itself. So once your application is actually deployed and running, you can switch on the logging in the same way from EM and you can also diagnose and explore the log output as well. So in summary then, uh, my message here is you should be looking seriously at the ADF logger as your instinctive or natural way to be instrumenting your application with messages, uh, either for the purposes of, of long-term instrumentation that you'll use down the line as a way of monitoring the application, or even in your everyday debugging activities where you just want to put um, quick and dirty messages to help you understand how the code is flowing. And this is because you can go do so much more than just see the output. You can also explore the relationships between uh, your message and other things that might have happened around it, which can be really invaluable in understanding what's going on within the application. There's a lot more information, more examples and more documentation available at this URL, um, which will also give you access to those code templates that I mentioned earlier, which you can simply install into JDeveloper and will make all of your logging that much easier. So I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation on the ADF logger.
Thank you for listening.